What is going on guys? Coach Joe here at Elite FTS. This trip has been absolutely amazing in so many ways. Uh, so today we have Sam here. Okay, Sam, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do here for Elite? Absolutely. So guys, I am the Director of Performance here at Elite FTS. I also have a background with working with Dr. Stuart McGill as a McGill Method Practitioner, focusing in on the lumbar spine, helping people heal from lower back injuries, working on boosting performance and just mm -hmm. kind of working around any sort of lumbar issues that somebody may have. Very cool. So if you guys are involved with strength sports, you know that uh, the lumbar spine or low back pain is a thing, mm -hmm. right? I know I've had it. I'm sure he's had it at some point in a lot Absolutely. of the athletes that we work with and the viewers at home watching this video. Now, what I found super interesting is going through the leg training uh, that we did the other day, which I'll put the video right up here, is right away both Sam and Dave were pointing out some things that they had saw with kind of my low back, my pelvis, my hips, and they were right away on top of me about it. And this is something that I guess now uh, thinking about it has been maybe something that's been influencing my performance a little bit, but I want him to dis discuss basically what he had saw, and then we're gonna show it on the exercises and then how to do those exercises properly, especially for myself moving forward. And I'm sure if I had this, I know some of you guys are as well. So Sam, what were you seeing, man? So basically what I was seeing is your pelvis had a mind of its own. <laughs> okay. No, so as we start to fatigue and as you, as you were fatigued yeah. during that point in the, in the training session, we start to notice the pelvis rocking, right? So if we're looking to train the hamstrings, if we're looking to train the quads, if we're looking to train the glutes, we need to make sure that we're going to have a stable torso, a stable mm -hmm. core, right? So what I was noticing on a lot of what you were doing towards the latter half, but it's, it, we actually saw it a little bit in the beginning, mm -hmm. but then it, it started as the fatigue started to build, it got a little bit more progressive and progressive we noticed that pelvis was a little bit compensating for the movement that you were trying to do. Mm -hmm. So for example, on the lying hamstring curl, spe specifically when Dave was trying to give you the people's elbow and yeah, try yeah, to yeah. Knock, yeah. knock you into place, we were noticing that all the movement was coming from his pelvis as opposed to from the hamstrings mm -hmm. themselves. We noticed it also a little bit of that tailbone tucking underneath on that hack squat, right? Yep. We also noticed it a little bit on that leg press. So that's where we first saw it. We saw that pelvic instability, which is what we're gonna be focusing in on today. Yeah. Understanding how the muscles around that pelvis stabilize the pelvis, which provide that solid platform for the actual mechanical tension going on at the muscle you wanted to target. Yeah. So for example, if that pelvis isn't stable, if we are not able to stabilize it from the top and stabilize it from the bottom, then if you're looking to train your hamstrings, now you're just kind of rotating that pelvis as opposed to locking it in mm -hmm. and getting all that tension out of those hamstrings, which we will demonstrate. All right, so let's get on to fixing my pelvis, baby. All right, guys, so as you guys all know, Joey is a big, strong dude. So anything we say here is not necessarily a muscular weakness. It's more of a coordination thing that we need to correct. Think more nervous system as opposed to the muscles themselves. I mean, look at him, he's a gorilla. So <laughs> what I want Joey to do is I want him to just do a couple reps and we're gonna just focus in here on his pelvis and his low back. So just hit a few reps. You see how that pelvis is tilting forward and you can actually see it. There you go. You see that pelvis top there? It kind of tilts forward and he gets a little bit of that compressive force on that lumbar spine and that lower back. You can even feel it, that. His erectors are kind of firing up a little bit. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that that pelvis is stable and we do that from our torso. We think rib cage and pelvis need to be stable and locked in right on top of each other. So Joey, what I'm gonna have you do. If you have a standing single leg leg curl machine, I want you to drive those elbows down into that, into that position, pulling those handles towards you. Essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to get those lats involved. We're trying to get that core musculature stiffened up. So even here, I want you to think about tucking your tailbone underneath. Yeah, so right. even a little bit more right there. So you're gonna keep that position. So I want you to round even, even more right here. There you go, you feel how the abs are engaged. So now, from this position, you're not gonna move, you're gonna lock this in. Thinking core stability, core tightness, locking in the obliques, locking in the, the abs. I'm shaking. He's shaking already. Why, why am I shaking? <laughs> He's shaking already. So now all I want you to do, bring that heel up to your butt. Don't move anything there. Oh, look at that, keep going. You see how much less that pelvis is moving. So now, it's way harder. Way, way <laughs> harder. 
because now he's focusing all that force. So reset each one. Take like a deep breath, brace, and now squeeze. There you go. Look at the face he's making. That's fantastic. So guys, what we're doing here, so you can rest. Ooh. Right? A little I'm different. <laughs> yeah, my entire body is shaking, but it, and it felt way harder. And I would say isolation is going to be way more on the hamstring. Absolutely. And you don't realize it, right? I've been doing this for probably a long time. And it's funny when I come here and right away, boom, they, they pinpoint something, which is why you want to surround your people with, uh, by people who are just more knowledgeable and better uh, to help you grow. And guys, this is not, a, like I said, it's not a weakness thing. If I were to pick somebody with weak hamstrings in this video, it's not going to be him. So what we really just did is repositioned his body in a way so he could maximize the force going to that hamstring, right? So before it was, his pelvis was tilting forward and the end of his hamstring and his pelvis were kind of doing this, mm -hmm. right? So you were feeling a sensation, yeah. but the stimulation wasn't there. So now what we did, we locked that pelvis in and you're forcing that hamstring to move away from a mm. stable position. So now you're feeling it way more in your hamstrings, yeah. less in your lower back, and I mean, please, you were shaking on those. Yeah, and <laughs> over time, you could probably see how that would fatigue other muscles that shouldn't probably be involved, right? Absolutely. So like, you know, if you, now you're just adding more fatigue to the lower back that's unnecessary, which then can, you know, lead to issues down the road and not allow us to train or put more volume uh, into our training, which is what we're all trying to do, right? So that we can get bigger and get stronger. So let's head on over to the next exercise that you had noticed something Absolutely. and we'll cover it there. Let's see it. All right, guys, so the second exercise where we really noticed Joey's pelvis rocking and rolling was on the uh, laying hamstring curl. So in a normal commercial gym, you'll have a machine that looks relatively like this. You're going to be on a slight uh, decline with your upper body, and your body's going to be kind of making an A shape. So Joey, what I want you to do, just do a few reps, and again, I want to just showcase how we were doing them before. That's good. You see, again, that pelvis comes up off of that pad. So what I'm going to have Joey do, if you have one of these machines in your gym, if you have a commercial gym, I bet you do. How we adjust this to get the most out of your hamstrings and a lot less out of that lower back is I want you to come up onto your elbows. Really prop yourself up. We're going to mimic that same position, so I want you to come up here. Yep, so even round forward. Think about tucking that tip. Yes. Right yep, you're feeling that position right there. Lock that core in. Again, we want to brace. We want to pressurize that core so we're stabilizing at that pelvis. So now, holding that position, I want you to curl. Yes, but you see how he still wants to fight oh, it's it. it's way harder. Way harder. Keep that arch right there. Brace. Oh, oh yeah. Holy Give me crap. one more. Stable, stable, stable. Squeeze. Notice a lot less out of the pelvis, yeah. more into those hamstrings. Let's do one more. Really brace. Yeah. There you go. Rest. Ooh. Oh my Much god. Much different, right? Yeah. It's just it, like yesterday was making me rethink all my training because of how when I engaged it properly, just how tough everything became. Uh, but it makes such a big difference. Just those small little cues of uh, you know, like you said, get your like tucking your hips, I guess, right? Yep. Uh, and just getting a good brace and it just isolating those hamstrings so much more. So for me, it's probably gonna be lowering the weight a bit, mm -hmm. right? Keeping my ego in check and making sure that I'm staying braced, tucked and tight with my pelvis, allowing me to just isolate those hamstrings uh, as best as I can. Absolutely, and this is one of those exercises where you see people loaded up and you see cranking out reps and whatnot, but if you focus in on the right things, the the carryover, you, you can do way more with less. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Because again, big strong dude, very, very strong with squats, pulls, overhead, everything. But if we get him in the, the position that he needs to be in, he can get such a great amount of work done with far less fatigue, yeah. far less wear and tear on the body, and more of an optimized sort of training. Right? Absolutely. And for me, some of the issues I've been running into have been uh, pelvis issues with the deadlift as well as the squat. So, you know, in my mind, it's like, I've been doing this for a long time, which has probably been fatiguing me more than I need to be fatigued, which then can lead to some issues with training down the road. So we're just trying to mitigate this as best as possible. And that's why it's great that they were able to point this out for me. And I know some of you guys may be having the same issue. Uh, so, you know, take these pointers, implement them into your training. Now what we're gonna do is you guys have to head on over to their channel 
because he is going to give me some corrective exercises or things to implement uh, in my training to help with this issue even more, okay? So make sure you guys go head over, follow Sam, follow EFTS, everybody here, uh, watch the video, and this will be something you can implement right now into your training. Thanks guys, and first of all, thank you so much for coming on, I appreciate it. Wealth of knowledge here, and it's been a great opportunity, so let's get on to that video.